Hi, my name is Anne Marie Leahy and I work in career services at Santa Monica College. And in order to help you prepare for finding work in the dance world, I want to share with you the best practices for creating a resume. First, we need to talk about where to find a job. So we're lucky living here in LA. There are so many opportunities to audition to perform for various productions, including TV, film, and theater. And on this slide, you're going to see some good websites um, that will tell you about local audition openings as they come up. So I definitely recommend that you um, follow these sites, um, whether you register for a newsletter or follow them on social media. Um, if they allow you to set up daily alerts so that messages are automatically sent to you, that way um, you don't have to check these sites every day. You just have to check like your one spot. Like I said, either your social media or your email or wherever. Um, but definitely good things to pay attention to. Um, so the other part, uh, the other way, there's a couple ways to find jobs, right? One is through those um, sites. And then sometimes the more high pro profile opportunities, they require you to have an agent, right? Um, so I just definitely just want to share that with you, some guidelines to be uh, aware of. Um, so the agencies, if you have an agent, they work for an agency and agencies definitely, um, they will take a commission. It's most commonly 10%, um, unless negotiated differently on every job you book through them, right? So um, the agent can only be paid once you've been paid. Um, they cannot charge upfront fees, so that's important to know. And they cannot, um, you know, force you to attend a specific school or use a specific uh, photographer as a condition of um, representation. Additionally, um, you know, most of these agencies, you can go on the agency websites and they'll tell you what they're looking for and how to submit um, your materials. So please, 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 please read that before you reach out. If you don't follow the instructions on their website, they'll like automatically not even pay attention to you because um, they want somebody that can follow basic instructions, right? And of course you can. So just telling you to be on the lookout for that, that there's, there's generally a spot on their website that'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, and Unfortunately, a lot of times when you do submit um, your application, you know, you're going to receive a standard form um, reply. Thank you. Please come to our next audition. Right. So that's fine. Just so that you know what to expect. Um, but once you are an assigned an agent, you want to stay in contact with them. Right. They they need to know what your schedule is um, and you need because if a job comes up, it's like super quick. They're calling you and like a hundred other people that they represent. So you want to um, respond quickly, right? That's the early bird gets the worm or however they say that, that that's the situation here. Um, and, you know, uh, agency uh, agencies, they usually do hold auditions a couple of times a year. Um, so, you know, they're usually separated by age, gender, and dance genre. Um, you know, if it's jazz or hip hop or whatever your specialty is. Um, and you, you want to attend the, the audition of your strongest dance style, right? Because most dancers are flexible and can do many different. Um, so you can attend all of them to demonstrate your versatility. Uh, that's also fine too. Um, but when you do show up for an audition, you're going to be expected to have a headshot and a resume. And of course, to wear an outfit that complements your body. Um, and that is like memorable, right? Um, girl in red stripes, right? Like you don't, uh, you want to stand out, right? <laughs> From the crowd. Um, but you also want your outfit, of course, to be appropriate um, for the style that you'll be performing. So um, it's a lot of information, right? But a lot of different avenues and, and hopefully it can be, it's going to be hard work, but hopefully it's a fun and exciting work and you'll have uh, lots of other people there with you going through the same thing. So um in addition um, to an agent, though, sometimes um, you'll be asked to be part of a union, especially um, if it's like film and TV. Um, so I just wanted to provide these resources to you um, because unions can be a great resource to check out any agent that you're thinking about signing up with. Um, unfortunately, um, not all agents are great, right? There's 
a lot of uh, people out there that may want to take advantage of people who are new to the industry. So um, that's why we've definitely included these links so that you can um, check for union approved agents, right? Um, that means that they probably haven't had uh, a lot of reports or complaints about them um, and can be trusted. So that being said, I will also give you some of the popular agencies for dancers. Um, didn't want to start with that. I want to give you all the disclaimers first, things that you need to know. Um, and just again, remember that the requirements for auditions and submissions um, can definitely be found on their <clears throat> website. So now that we've talked about all these places where you can find jobs and what that looks like and how you do it, what does a resume look like, right? Because no matter what you're applying for, you're going to need a resume. Um, and the dancer resume is actually very different from just about every other kind of resume, except for maybe the acting resume. Um, but this, you know, primarily, uh, primarily because you're going to include a picture of yourself and you're going to include your height and weight, right? This information is actually illegal to request in other fields, but performance fields require that they see your look so they know if you fit um, the role that they're casting. So um, that being said, um, you know, again, a resume is not um, every job you've ever had, right? Um, your dance resume needs to be a concise summary of all your relevant dance work and training. It should be one page. Um, you know, you want to make sure your spelling, punctuation, and grammar are good. You want to list your relevant experience uh, reverse chronologically. So your most recent experience is on the top and then the longest away is on the bottom. Um, generally, when you submit your resume, you want to submit it as a PDF rather than a Word or a Google Doc format. Um, that's kind of the most expected format. Um, at auditions, again, um, the dancers will turn in a headshot. Um, and, and you may on your resume also include a link to, um, to your dance reel, right? So, but, but what is a headshot? Because we haven't talked about a headshot, so let's start there. Um, a headshot is, um, it's the, it's how the agent sees you before meeting you. So you want it to be a flattering picture, but also an accurate picture. Um, and it is well worth the investment of getting a really nice picture. So, um, you know, I always say like you're, you're a student right now. Maybe you need to make friends with a photography student. Go to one of the photography club <laughs> events and see if they can take some, some shots for you, right? You don't have to spend a million dollars. You just want it to look professional and be good. Um, it is beneficial to have um, a close-up face shot with like natural makeup and uh, one with a, a heavier glam look and um, one full body shot, right? So you're going to, you can have a couple of photos. So now back to the resume. Um, what counts as experience? Um, so, you know, school and community performances that you've done. Um, you can include work experience and volunteer experience. Um, you know, if you've taught at a local uh, art center, um, if you've, you know, you know, been a dance teacher. Um, of course, though, really importantly, um, your education, right? Any, your college, workshops, master classes, anything like that. Any organizations you have um, that you're, that you're a member of, um, any dance associations, that always speaks to proof of passion. So it's kind of like, what am I talking about, right? So let's, let's take a look <laughs> to get a better idea of what I mean by all of this. So, um, Here's where you can see, you know, we have the headshot in here. Um, you have your first and last name. You have your height, weight, hair color, eye color. Um, your contact information is really important to be easily accessible. Um, if you are not signed to an agency, it's your telephone number with the voicemail set up um, because oftentimes if employers can't reach you, they'll move on to the next candidate, right? So. Um, and then your email, of course, um, one that you check regularly again, um, you know, for, first one in line has, has a better shot. Um, and you know, hopefully your email is your first and last name or something professional. Um, so you're representing yourself well. Um, if you are signed with an agency, you will replace your contact information with that of the agency, right? Um, you never need to add your address or other personal information. So you can you can put <clears throat> city and state, right? Los Angeles, California, but you don't put your street address. 
um, and you only add your date of birth if you're uh, under, if you're 18 um, or younger. Um, additionally, um, you know, most of, at this point, most of the training and school, uh, the experience you have is going to be uh, school productions and training. Um, you don't want to list recitals on your resume, only like um, proper public performance. Um, as you get more experience, you can continue to expand to have different headings, right? Um, so, you know, this in this example, you know, you can see there's four columns outlining what was the uh, project title, what was the role you played, um, who was the company or the court choreographer, and then the year that you participated, right? For training, you can put each of the styles of dance that you've trained in, again, followed by the teacher or choreography. Um, in the year and then you can add any you know any intensives um, that you did any master classes that you've done um, any awards that you've received in terms of dance so hopefully this gives you um, a, a good idea um, and um, most applications as I mentioned also requested demo reel so be sure to include a link to your demo reel with your contact information if you're not sure how to go about creating your demo reel um, we do have a, a video on um, dancer demo reels that you can check out for um, more guidance on that so again um, an important thing is the resume formatting um, and um, to keep track so if you're applying for the job online you do send it as a PDF um, but the most important thing is keeping a copy right know who you applied to um, and know what you told them so if you apply to a certain agency you know keep keep a record of that keep a record whether you put it in a Google Doc folder or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you use to organize your life right make sure that you keep a copy of what you applied for and the resume that you use to apply with um, because if you get a call back you want to remember what you told them right which which style were you applying for when did you apply um, what was the description um, because they're usually going to close the website down if it was posted on their website all that descriptive stuff that they put on there they're going to pull it down before they call you so keep a copy of any of that kind of information that will help you so that when you get the call you know what they're talking about so I know that was a ton of information, I apologize, and I went through it really fast, but, and that, you know, getting a job is so stressful, right? And it's, it's kind of tends to be a numbers game. You have to apply to several opportunities before you even hear back from one. Um, but it's important to not, don't allow yourself to be, dec become discouraged, right? Or, you know, we're all, we're human, we're going to feel discouraged, of course, but like maybe, you know, have some friends or family or some resources at SMC to help you kind of get through that experience. Um, so some of the resources we have for you here, we have Dance 70, which is a dance staging technique, it's a great class to take. It helps you get your stage production skills for dance performances, um, and maybe also can be a good place to get some content for your dance reel. Um, SMC also has career services that can help answer basic questions about how to break into the field. And of course, our academic counselors can help you find the best classes to take to create a great um, portfolio of projects to, to make you competitive for the work world. So super excited. Keep on dancing and we're here for you. Good luck.